In this video, I'm going to be doing a full range projectile problem where I'm going to be solving for just about every unknown variable that you can for this type of problem. We're going to solve for the total time in the air, the range, which is basically the delta x, the maximum height, which is the delta y at the peak, and then the final overall velocity, which we'll call a vf. Now, our original situation is this. We have a projectile shot from the ground level and it is fired 30 degrees from the horizontal and it has an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. So with that information given, we can go ahead and solve for each of these things. So as usual, what we're going to want to do is separate everything into an X and Y column. And just a reminder why we do that is because everything in the X direction is horizontal and it does not have a um, net force, therefore it's moving at a constant velocity. So anything that's in this column, we will only use this formula right here, the constant velocity formula. Everything in the vertical direction we place in here because it's only directed up and down, and up and down does have a net force because of the force of gravity, so we're gonna use all three of these acceleration formulas potentially. Okay, so with that being said, our first step is to take our velocity and break it up into its X and Y components because the 10 meters per second, it doesn't fit into a horizontal or vertical um, column. So we want to find a VX and then also a VY as well using this 30 degree angle and then our hypotenuse of 10. So what we're going to want to do is for the VX, this is the side that's adjacent to the 30 degree angle. So we're going to want to use the adjacent side in combination with the hypotenuse. So we're going to want to use cosine. So the VX is going to be the 10 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then that's going to give us 8.66 meters per second. For our Y side, it's opposite the 30 degree angle. So we're going to want to use Sine for that one, 10 meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees, and then that's going to give us 5 meters per second. So we can go ahead and place those two into our X and Y column. We have a velocity of 8.66 meters per second and an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. On the left side, I didn't have to write a VI or VF because it's a constant velocity it's not changing, it's 8.66 the entire time. But on the Y side, that is my initial value. Now, we know that once it gets projected into the air, it's in free fall, its acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we also know when it comes back to ground level, the final velocity is gonna be the same as the initial, but because it's going downward, we're gonna drop a negative sign in there. So now we're ready to go ahead and solve for our time. And what we're gonna do is we're definitely gonna use the right column over here because we only have one number to work with over here. So that's not very much. So the formula we're gonna to wanna to use is the first one over here because that's the one we have three out of the four variables and T is our unknown. So let's go ahead and plug into that first one and see what we get for time. So all I had to do was put in our acceleration negative 5 minus 5, which is negative 10 up top, cross multiply these two. So it's basically negative 10 divided by negative 9.8. And I have a total time of 1.02. So we can go ahead and check this one off of the list. Now, the second thing is we're going to find our range. Now, because time is not a vector, it could be slid into our X column, which is what we're going to do. We have our time right over here and we can make that 1.02 seconds. So we can go ahead and use our constant velocity formula and go ahead and solve for that delta x. All right, now we plugged in everything into this formula. We basically multiplied both sides by 1.802, and then 1.02 times 8.66 is 8.83. So then that takes care of our 
range. So let's go ahead and clear a little space so we can go ahead and solve for our max height and our final overall velocity. Now for our maximum height, we could do this one of two ways. Um, we know that if our total time in the air is 1.02, then if we take that total time of 1.02 seconds and split it in half, then we would get 0.51 seconds and that would be the time that it takes to rise or the time it takes to fall. So we can use that to find our maximum height or we can also use a VF of zero meters per second because at the very peak in the Y direction, not the X, because the X maintains a constant velocity of 8.66, but in the Y direction, it's not rising at that point. So you could use a final velocity of zero. Okay, so you could do this one of two ways. You could use the second formula and then plug in the time of 0.51, or you can use the third formula, and then you can take advantage of using that VF of zero. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm just going to go ahead and use that second one and see what we get for our delta Y. All right, so I plugged in all my numbers. Uh, I really didn't have to do any algebra there, but you're gonna find the product of these two, and then you're actually gonna subtract the product of these because it's negative 9.8 there, and you get 1.28 meters for your max height, so check for our max height. Now, for the final overall velocity, this one is actually pretty easy for this type of problem, um, but I'll show you the method so that you know how to do it for uh, any other type of problem. So as the projectile is coming back down, we know that it has a horizontal velocity of 8.66 meters per second. And then at the very end, we know it has a final velocity of negative five meters per second directed downwards. So what you would normally do is you would use the Pythagorean theorem to find this final resultant vector right here. And then this is your final velocity, um, which you'd call your final overall velocity or your resultant velocity. This final velocity is just strictly in the vertical direction, but it's in combination with this 8.66 right here. So um, what you would do is you would take 8.66 squared plus negative five squared, and then set that to your VF squared. That would be like the A squared plus B squared equals C squared sort of thing for Pythagorean theorem, and then square root both of these sides, okay? I know already know that it comes out to 10 meters per second, because that was our original 10. Um, but in other cases where it doesn't fall all the way back to the ground or falls a little bit extra, you might have a different vertical component. But either way, you're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem and then that would give you the final result in velocity. This one is still gonna be 30 degrees. With the initial launch, it was 30 degrees above the horizontal. This is 30 degrees below the horizontal. Um, anyways, that was the method for solving for your total time, your delta x, your delta y, and your final overall velocity. I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.